Good morning. Good to be here. Good to be here. Um, can you hear me all right? Too loud? Turn down? I'm afraid my mouth don't turn down too much. Deaf people talk loud. You probably notice I'm not Pastor Michelle, but <laughs> Pastor Michelle is here. Uh, I was just thinking I'd like to say a special thank you to Colony Church. Uh, two, two big things, actually. Uh, through, a, through the youth group at Hartford, I met my wife, and we've been married now 55 years. And also about the preaching business, Colony Church has supported and helped me all the way through, and I was ordained here with three other fellows. So I appreciate the support. It means a lot to me. Let's stand now for confession. Okay. So Eddie's gonna make the announcement. Eddie, why don't you make some announcements? Why don't you make some? <laughs> no, you you already there. <laughs> Good morning. How are you all today? Good. Thank you, Michelle. I'm standing up here uh, with all the help I can possibly have with the choir. And you all always do a good job helping me to correct me when I'm wrong. And I'm usually wrong. Anyway, uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 2021 Homecoming Service, also known as the 176th anniversary of Colony Lutheran Church. Carol, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, the announcements in your bulletin, but I'll announce them again uh, due to their importance. Uh, and the pastor, Michelle, told me what I needed to announce, so here we go. Bible school begins on August the 1st and goes through August the 6th. We still need some uh, additional teachers, helpers, and also students. So any who are willing to participate, please contact the church office as soon as possible. The church bazaar is scheduled for September the 25th. And the organizers are requesting that folks start cleaning out their closets, basements, garages, and other hiding places and consider donating these treasures to be sold at the bazaar. Donations can be made during church office hours or you can arrange for appointments to, to donate at other times. Members who read this week's Colony Connection were asked to place today's offerings in the plate at the entrance to the sanctuary. If anyone didn't do this, please pass any envelopes to the center aisle during the anthem and the usher will collect and present all offerings at the altar to be blessed by the to be blessed after the anthem and prior to the Lord's prayer. Uh, for those of you who either know or don't know that Jack Sheely was put into the hospital uh, Thursday or Friday, he is now out doing well, but we aren't sure whether he and Kat are going to be here today and Kat is one of our golden ages to be honored, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Many of you were here for the 150th anniversary in 1995. Our pastor then was Reverend Harold Jeffries, who is with us today, uh, and I will welcome him shortly. Our guest minister in 1995 was Reverend Dr. James All, then Bishop of the South Carolina Synod. Our guest minister today is Reverend Andrew David Ergel, who has already introduced himself, but as you all know, he is a son of Colony Lutheran Church who is now retired, and I'll also welcome him again shortly. Hang in there, I'm getting there. Just a little history, the 150th anniversary officers were Wendell Beatenbaugh, Vice Chairman, Cheryl Beatenbaugh, Secretary, Randy Cannon, Treasurer, the 176 officers are myself, Vice President, Barbara Wise, Secretary, and Jake Kill, Treasurer. And Pastor Michelle is now our new pastor who accepted our call and became our pastor on September the 2nd, 2020. So we still welcome you. You're welcome. She was officially installed by the Dean of the Heartlands Conference, Reverend Michael Price, pastor of Grace Lutheran Church on May the 23rd, 2021. Obviously, many things have changed. Attendees today received an updated historical document with most additions being added since the 
50th anniversary. Hopefully uh, everyone uh, has one of these. It's yours to keep uh, at no price. And if you didn't get one, we have some extras, uh, and we will hand them out until we, uh, until we run out of them, and then we'll print some more. You'll notice that this document is dedicated to the glory of God and all past and present members of Colony Lutheran Church who have sustained this congregation since 1845. The document is in memorial, memoriam to Pastor Jerry and Diane Trantum, who passed away in 2020 and 2018. This document is in honor of Pastor Michelle and her husband, Neil, and, has, and a short history of the Fishers is included in the document. If you haven't met Neil, he's right there, an extremely talented individual who is also the communications director of the South Carolina Senate. Neil, are you listening? <laughs> Apparently not. Okay. <laughs> you'll, you'll have to coach him some at the end of the day. Oh, hi, Neil. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> You're killing me, Neil. You're killing me. Good morning. Good morning, Neil. Uh, two additional uh, significant events occurred during the last two years. Nick Morris earned his Eagle Scout badge, and it was presented here on March the 1st, 2020. And Johnny Long earned his badge, and it was also presented at Colony on May the 16th, 2021. The Eagle Scout badge, as most of you know, is the highest award in Boy Scouts, and congratulations to, the, to both of them. Another son of the Colony Congregation, Christopher Dale Sheely, was ordained to the Ministry of Word and Sacrament at Grace Lutheran Church in Prosperity on June the 5th, 2021. The presiding minister, the Reverend Virginia A. Bisher, Bishop of the South Carolina Synod, conducted the ordination service. Christopher married Ms. Sarah E. Livingston, a few weeks before the ordination service. Reverend Christopher Sheely is now the full-time pastor of Mount Hebron Lutheran Church in Leesville. So we have another son of the congregation doing well. Even though he was the organist uh, and the pianist and the choir director, he's still a son of the congregation. I'd like to again welcome all of you to today's service and offer a special welcome to one of our previous pastors, Harold Jeffries, and his spouse, Richard Weeman. It's great to see you again, and we appreciate your being here today. Uh, when I spoke with Pastor Jeffries uh, a few minutes ago, uh, I reminded him of the time that uh, he called and asked if I were willing to serve on church council if I were elected. I was living in Charleston at that point in time, and I said, no, I don't, Pastor, I don't believe I can... Uh, come to the council meeting, and come to church every Sunday and every Thursday, yada, yada, yada. But I promised him a while ago that I have been, uh, what you call it, uh, I have been elected to the church council and I'm now paying the punishment and my dues. <laughs> so, uh, here we are. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, Harold was pastor of Colony for the 150th celebration in 1995. Current count council members decided we wouldn't try to outdo what Harold and Wendell did for the 150th celebration, specifically period dress. If anyone wants to see what that looked like, there's a color picture in the uh, hallway to the Cross and Fellowship Hall, and this is sort of what it looks like. Uh, and there's a lot of people in here, but that picture is hung on the wall in the fellowship hall. Other colony pastors, pastors Woodrow, Frick, and Paul Williams were invited to today's service but were unable to attend. During today's service, we will honor our newest golden agers, Susan and Kat Sheely. Uh, I don't believe that uh, Kat is here now, so we will um, figure out a way to honor them nonetheless. We will also rededicate our World War I and World War II honor rolls at the end of the service. They were refurbished by Kat Sheely earlier this year. Uh, as many of you know, those two, uh, those two documents hung in the fellowship hall uh, for a long time, and you could hardly read the names on there, but Kat traced them over, and they looked like they were just done yesterday. They're beautiful, and we're going to have uh, Pastor Andrew David to uh, rededicate those today. And now I'd like to welcome again a son of the congregation, Andrew David Urkel, his wife Janie, 
and a few members of his family. If you all would raise your hands, uh, the members of the family. I know, I know you're out there somewhere. There you go. There you go. I think we have about eight or nine people with uh, uh, Andrew David, and we're welcome and glad to have you. And and his parents moved their membership from St. Philip's Lutheran Church to Colony on December the 20th, 1959. <clears throat> he graduated. <clears throat> excuse me. He graduated from Newberry College and attended the seminary from 1964 to 1968. He was pastor of two churches, and with Janie's support, he served 10 and a half years at Grace Lutheran Church in Gilbert, South Carolina, and 26 and a half years at St. Jacob's Lutheran Church in Chapin. Think about that. Two churches spanning over 36 years of service. We know how you did it, and we're proud of what you've done. Andy and Janie retired in 2005 and live on Half Acre Road in Newberry. Since then, Andy has been, has been a continued blessing to Colony Church, leading a couple homecoming services, filling in as a substitute pastor, and most recently during the time of Pastor Jerry's hospitalization and subsequent death. In summary, Pastor and Janie have stepped up every time we have asked for help, and we honor the fact that he is a son of Colony Lutheran Church. Thank you and your family so much for being here today and for what you have done in the past. Finally, finally, for those of you who haven't been with us, with us for a while, please take a look around the church grounds, and I'd like to suggest some things that you might want to see. Our new cross in the cemetery, donated by Cheryl Beatenbaugh, who is with us today. Good to see you, Cheryl. Uh, and built, and the uh, cross was built by Don Chapel and Metal Masters. It's beautiful at night and early morning during sunrise. Also, please read the South Carolina historical sign celebrating the history of Colony Church. The sign was added on the church grounds during 2020 for the 150th anniversary. It's right over there in the corner of the uh, intersection of the road into the church and Colony Church Road. And please visit the Shevling Memorial located in front of the prayer garden, which was made using one of the granite foundation blocks that supported the old white church, where members worshiped in this same location from 1884 to 1957. The Reverend Herman Yost, Bishop of the South Carolina Synod, dedicated these two monuments on August the 2nd, 2020. And that was his last uh, Sunday service prior to his retirement. So we were blessed to have him with us, and he certainly supported us during the time uh, during Pastor Jerry's illness and, and subsequent death. In addition to providing the historical document I spoke of at the beginning, we have, a small, we have small pieces of granite, just like this, for each attendee of today's homecoming service. These small blocks were hand chiseled, cut from larger blocks of the granite foundation of the old church. If you drive or walk through the cemetery, you will find some of the remaining granite blocks along the Woodline Road at the northeast corner of the cemetery. These blocks that we're giving to each person who wants one today they are located on the pew at the entrance to Cross and Fellowship Hall under the picture of the old white church. If we run out of blocks today, we will provide, <coughs> excuse me, if we run out of blocks today, we, we will provide a chisel and sledgehammer to anyone who wants to create their own. <laughs> Thank Randy Cannon for chiseling on these. And he had a little help. Okay, everybody heard enough? Any announcements more? If not, let's begin the service. But first, young folks, don't worry. Pastor Michelle will conduct Colony Kids service just prior to the sermon. Uh, one other thing, I have to thank uh, Danny and Richard Fulmer, mostly Danny, for uh, painting the uh, front door of the church. Uh, Danny was the worker. Cohen, Cohen, are you back there? Cohen was the supervisor, so good job, <laughs> Cohen. Cohen kept uh, Danny straight during that time. Any other announcements? Pastor Andy, welcome again. Over to you. We're going to give it another try. Thank, thank you. We're going to give it another try. <laughs> let's, let's stand for the confession. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. God, our provider, help us 
It is hard to believe there's enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teaching and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the word of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Beloved people, God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the work of miracles, there's always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Ephesians, the third chapter. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of Jews, was near. When he looked up, he saw a large crowd coming toward him. Jesus said to Philip, where do we buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Jesus answered him, six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make people sit down. Now, there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered up the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. They filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who's come into the world. When Jesus realized they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat and started across the sea to Capernaum. Now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing when they rode about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. And he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. And they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
five loaves, two fish. Two fish about the size of what you'd catch. That is, in the hands of Jesus becomes a marvelous banquet, and all you can eat of fast, well, sort of like homecoming. Did you know that the feeding of the 5,000 is the only miracle recorded in Scripture that all gospel accounts record, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The setting, of course, Jesus and company had just crossed the lake, needed some time. They just heard some terrible news we read earlier in the scripture. Jesus, his forerunner, his friend, his cousin, John the Baptist, had been beheaded by Herod. Jesus was hurting, his disciples were hurting, they needed time, quiet time, alone time, time to meditate and grieve, but it didn't happen. The retreat didn't occur. Now catch this, Jesus wasn't upset. His time became their time. He saw them as sheep without a shepherd, he healed and he taught. Understand, Jesus was quite an attraction. He preached, he, he taught, and he did so with authority. And they were there for quite a while, and the, well, the issue of food came up, food in the wilderness. Jesus was concerned about sending them away with empty bellies. They had a ways to go. So first, he goes to his disciple Philip, who was from the area, Ask him, you know, around here, where can we buy enough bread for these people to eat? And Philip's response was, six months' wages wouldn't buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. Now, even though Philip knew the area, knew the eating joints, he could think of no possibilities. His opinion was, can't do it don't have the money. No McDonald's anyway. <laughs> Philip's opinion was there's nothing we can do about it. It's impossible. Now he wasn't the first one to feel inadequate in the face of life. Children of Israel stood on the edge of the promised land. Now after God had delivered them out of Egypt, after God had been taking care of all their needs, 40 years in the wilderness, the spies, they came back and reported that the inhabitants seemed like giants to them. And we seemed like grasshoppers. And some of the people in Israel wanted to go back to Egypt, back to bondage. They couldn't see God for the giants but God was there. Remember, Solomon, too, newly crowned king, came before the Lord and confessed, I don't know how to go in and out before these people, but he did come to God. Inadequacy. What we all feel at times, what we all felt during this COVID thing we've been putting up with, and it is what Philip felt, standing right by Jesus and a hungry crowd of 5,000. The text said it was a test. Would Philip <coughs> focus on the hungry people, the need, or would he focus on the presence of Jesus? Well, he flunked the test. He couldn't see Jesus for the people. He's pessimistic. Half a year's pay wouldn't be enough for each of them to get a little. It's hopeless. Nothing can be done. You ever felt that way? Sure. And then Ellis Andrew. He volunteers. Hey, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. Now, we don't know anything at all about this boy except he was willing to give up his lunch. Skip lunch. Go hungry if necessary. Understand, 
it was about the amount of food that one little boy could have eaten. And it wasn't fancy. Barley loaves about the cheapest food. And the fish, well, like brim you'd catch, or sardines. And this is what Andrew found. This is what the little boy had that he was willing to share. A boy's lunch to feed 5,000 hungry people plus the women and children. The boy offered. Jesus accepted. In his hand, it was enough. Mother Teresa once wrote about a Hindu family that had eight children, and they hadn't eaten for quite a while. She took some rice to them. She saw the children's face shining with hunger, and the mother took the rice and divided it into two parts, and with one part, she went out the door. And after she returned, Mother Teresa asked her where she'd gone. She explained that their neighbors, a Muslim family with many children, were hungry too. She had shared with them. Here in the hands of Jesus, a marvelous banquet, all you can eat of half. The food multiplied in the Lord's hands. And there are those who say, well, others brought out food they shared. But I see a miracle of multiplication happening. Jesus using what was given, and it was enough. It was more than enough. In fact, you remember in the children's sermon, after the people had eaten, 12 baskets of food were gathered from the leftovers. In the hands of the Lord, our little bits are enough. God can take the ordinary and make the extraordinary. The impossible come possible. Rembrandt could take a $2 canvas, paint a picture on it, and make a priceless masterpiece. That's art. John D. Rockefeller could take a worthless check and sign his name on it and make it worth a million dollars. A mechanic could take a piece of metal, scrap metal, bend it, weld it, shape it, turn it into a $500 car park. And Jesus Christ take common bread, two puny fish, multiply it, and make it a banquet for 5,000 people. A miracle. No, friends, God would use what we are willing to give. J. Ethel Jones declared, little is much when God's in it. It's not how much we have, but what we do with what we have. A little bit in God's hands. A young man once told Dr. Norman Vincent Peale that he wanted to start his own business, but he didn't have any money. And Dr. Peale responded, empty pockets never hold anybody back, only empty heads and empty hearts can do that. What do we focus on? Dwight L. Moody once said, the world has yet to see what God can do with and for and by a person who is wholly consecrated to him. Reverend Stephen Crox tells the story of this missionary hiking the high Indians trails or remote village in Peru. As he was walking along, he looked down, he saw a pretty rock on the ground, so he picked it up and stuck it in his pack. That evening, he walked into a, a village to a very unfriendly welcome. No one offered him a bed. No one asked him to come and warm by the fire. He learned that a famine had struck. People were starving. They were afraid to share. So he got an idea and calling the natives around the campfire, he preached God's love in Christ. And then he said, 
I'm going to feed you by making some stone soup. He opened his sack and pulled out the rock. And they murmured, stone soup, stupidest thing we ever heard of. Trust me, said the missionary, but I'm going to need a pot to put it in. Woman got him, got him a pot. He poured two buckets of water in it, built the fire, and got the fire rolling in the stone. And curious, the villagers, they started gathering around the pot, and the missionary began to stir the pot and drool. And he said, you know, stone soup tastes mighty good with a few carrots. Somebody said, I got five. Fetched them. Then they said potatoes would add to the flavor. And then came the onions and celery and little bits of meat to top off the pot of soup. Within an hour, the community formed around that stew pot. All ate, all were filled, and they heard the story of Jesus Christ. No pleas. And I might say especially at Colony, God still acts. God still transforms our little bits big time. We need to trust him and let him fill our inadequacy. Think back what Jesus did with two fish and five loaves. Two gram, five biscuits. And know that miracles stand, can and still happen. That is, if we get out of the way. Reverend Chris Appleby tells about meeting some representatives of small Anglican churches, discuss how small churches can grow. And one of the things that came out of the meeting was how hard it is for small churches to do all the things that could be done with the little resources that they have. We understand common problem. It seems a fact that none of us has the resources to do all that needs to be done. But we all have our little bits. The disciples felt the same in that lonely place, surrounded by 5,000 hungry people. But Jesus changed things, and he still does. Jesus took the little bit and a marvelous miracle occurred. With God, everything is possible. With God, everything is possible. So let us be a can-do church, as Colony has always been. The Phillips among us will say, we can't afford it. We don't have the money or there isn't leadership, or we just ordinary folk can't do it, or this one, we like things the way they always been. But the Andrews among us say, there's a lad here with two fish and five barley loaves. Think about it. What do you have to offer? Let us strive, please, to be a can-do church because God is on our side, and with him, absolutely nothing is impossible. Amen.
Pastor Andrew and David, wonderful sermon. And Colony is a can-do church. I agree with you totally. Right. Wonderful. Good morning. Good morning. As president of the Women's Organization of Colony, I bring you greetings on our annual homecoming and Golden Age Recognition Sunday. It is my pleasure to recognize and to honor members of our congregation who have reached a very special milestone, referred to as a golden ager, which we're so proud. According to one reference, a golden ager is a person whose maturity in faith, hope, and love provides inspiration and motivation for younger disciples to face life's challenges. So it is with pleasure that we recognize Colony's current golden agers. And I'm going to ask you if you would just please stand as your name is called. That is, if you're able. Cheryl Reeves Beatball. We're so happy to see Cheryl with us today. You may be seated after your name is called. Jay Wendell and Gloria Beatball. George and Jody Black. Just turn around and look at all these wonderful golden ages that we have. Uh, Lewis Black, Don and Patsy Chapel. They couldn't be with us today. Charles and Jean Dominic. Levi, did I see Charles and Jean? Maybe not. Okay. Robert Connor Dyer Sr. Eddie and Carol Fellers. Neil Fulmer. Cecil couldn't be with us. Elizabeth R. Fulmer, Miss Betty. She's our patriarch of our golden ages attending today. Whenever I have a problem, you know who I always see. Miss Betty, I've told her many times, she's almost like a second mother to me. I lost my mother when she was young. And Miss Betty is always there for all of us. Thank you, Miss Betty. Roxanne Long Fulmer. Bob Fulmer. Wilma Height, that's Mike, couldn't be with us. Shelby Hartle, unable to attend today. Tracy Longshore, I don't believe Tracy is here today. Claudette Lester, do we have a lot? Francis Long, Billy Long, Patsy Long. Peggy Morris, Joe Morris isn't with us, Maxie Morris isn't, Carolyn Nichols, Patsy Nichols, okay. um, Dan and Judy, Rochelle, Vicki Roof isn't with us today, Miss Burnis, bless her heart, she, I know she's in the spirit here. Um, visit her when you can at the nursing home. Jack Sheely. Jack is ill and not able to be with us today. Mary Ellen and James Sly, Jr. Bobby Smith. Bobby's with us. Barbara and Larry Wise. Steve and Pat Wise, and they were unable to be with us. And we also honor two new inductees, I shall call them, into our Golden Age roster, and they could not be with us today. And they are Susan Fulmer and Kat Sheely. So uh, we miss them very much, but we do say a big 
thank you for their service to the Lord as well. I also want to let you Golden Ages all know that the women of Colony Church, I welcome, will be making a bus shed payment in your memory, some memory and honor of all the Golden Ages of Colony Church. So next month, we will have a new bus shed payment in honor and memory of you. And before I end, I want to remind you to please remain for pictures following the service today. And another reminder, we don't have fish today. We, uh, we do have our bread, but we have food, not for 5,000, but certainly for everybody who is attending our service today. So following the pictures, we invite you all to go to Cross and Fellowship Hall for a nice luncheon. So even if you didn't say you were coming and you're here, please join us because we're going to have plenty. Not again, as I say, for 5000 but we're going to have enough for all of you. Can you believe Colony Church has been serving Christ since 1845? 176 years. Each of you received a little bookmark as you came in today. I thought I had mine here, but I guess I don't. Um, and that is provided to you by our welcome. You notice a, a picture of our church a beautiful benediction on the back that we all love so much, and the new cross that we have in our cemetery. So please take this memory as a token from the ladies of Colony Church. To all our golden ages, I would like to leave with you this message. Do not count your age by the years you have known, but by the friends you have made and the kindnesses shown. For life is not measured by the years that you live, but by the deeds you do and the joys you give. God bless you all. Let us join our voices with saints of all times and places that remember our common faith with the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for the church, bless the ministries of our neighboring congregations, empower churches throughout the world, and encourage missionaries who accompany global neighbors. Kindle in us a spirit of col collaboration that all people may know your loving works. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. Right. We pray for creation, send rain to lands experience and drought, 
and come to the aid of those enduring sweltering heat. Nurture wheat and barley crops gone for the nourishment of your people and conserve aquatic habitats and fish populations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those who govern, cast out arrogance, selfishness, and corruption, and instruct those who lead to practice compassion and humility. Inspire them with a vision of the common good and a commitment to ensure that all who are hungry are fed. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those bowed down by heavy burdens, those who are unemployed or underemployed, those unable to find affordable, affordable housing, and those without health insurance. Console those who grieve and hear the cries of those who are calling to you for healing, especially Cheryl Beatonball, Tim and Terry Beatonball, Steve Bishop, Jody Black, Patsy Chapel, Dean Coward, Barry Dowd, Bernice Ford, Juanita Fulmer, Shelby Hartle, Melissa Hutchinson, Melinda Janeka, Francis Long, Joe Morris, Dan Rochelle, Judy Sadler, Marilyn Schroer, Bernice Sheely, Jack Sheely, Pat and Steve Wise, Morgan Word, and the friends and family of Jim Dees and Paul Hawkins. For those whom we lift to you both aloud and in our hearts. Kathy, Barbara, Angie, Gina. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. We pray for this assembly. Deepen our resolve to use what we have to serve those in need. When we, wor when we worry that we do not have enough resources for ministry, assure us of your abundance. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. For those struggling economically because of this virus, for small businesses struggling to stay open, for those unemployed and underemployed, hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. We give thanks to those for those who have died. As you sustain them through all the days, so dwell in our hearts that we may have the power to comprehend with all the saints the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We lift the, these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much see to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen.
up in your kingdom, Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Before we conclude our service today, one more thing we need to do. Cat Sheely took two honor rolls, these two honor rolls, listing the name of the men who served in both the First and Second World War and retraced their names which were faded due to time. This morning we'll rededicate them and remember those who served. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, as we rededicate these honor rolls to your glory and praise. We thank you for the men and women who answered the call to serve our nation in a time of need. May we not forget their service and all those who have served our nation in times of war. Grant us faith to know your gracious presence in times of war and in times of peace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us. We're we not doing that yet, okay? I think he likes to interrupt me. Okay. I need some help walking. You got a little piece of the rock off. Oh, okay. And I'd like to read it if you don't mind. I'd be proud for you too. With much gratitude, we present Reverend Andrew David Irving, a son of Colony Lutheran Church, with a small piece of the Colony Old Church Granite Foundation. The old church was built in 1884 and was relocated. Your heart. Thank you. Just so you'll know, this is the third one of these we have given. Wow. The first one was the Bishop Yost. Wow. Last August the 2nd, when he was here to dedicate, as I mentioned, the historical sign and the uh, Chevron Memorial. The second one was the Bob Fullman. Bob received one in honor of all of the work that he has done.
okay. He didn't want to do the rock. <laughs> so, thank you so much for everything. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Enjoy and appreciate all you've done. Well, bless your heart. I appreciate that a lot. Okay, I think there was something else I wanted to say, but I probably said enough today. But just so you'll know, my sister and her husband got here a little bit late because they heard that I was talking and taking up half the day. Oh. Oh, all right. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank you. Okay, okay. Well, bless your heart. Thank you. Appreciate that, Daddy. We're going to try the benediction. God who provides us and feeds us and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.